always feel His holy presence When there's southern gospel music all around Don't you just love that gospel music Don't you just love that southern sound Can't you just feel His holy presence When there's southern gospel music all around Friends, welcome to Southern Style Praise. I'm your host, Richard Hissong. Take three. Take four. I am here with Mr. Chris Allman of Greater Vision. And Chris, it's great to have you here on the program. And man, you guys obviously are, are one of the premier groups of Southern Gospel. But you had another number one song that you wrote. We did, yeah. And, very, uh, very. Well, it's just, you know, it's just that we've stayed out here long enough to where people just have to, they have to buy, either like us or, you know what I mean. I don't know, but they don't have yes. much choice. They don't have much choice. They have to like Greater Vision. But no, one of my favorite songs. I'm telling you, is God doesn't care. I yes. love it, man. I, Thank you. I texted you about that. You did. Out, you of the, did. out of the goodness of my heart, I said I love the song. He did. It hurt me. He did. He don't like it. to give me. 
You know, God Doesn't Care has been a great song for us. It's a, it's a song, obviously, with a twist, because if you only see the, the, uh, the title, your, your wheels spin, and you know how people are. They're going to try to go ahead and develop an opinion about what the song says and what's it, what it's about before they ever hear it. Right. And, a lot, and some people have done that, but for the most part, people give it a shot, and uh, it's really blessed people, you know. It, the song simply says God doesn't care about those, your past, in, in regards to, don't let those things keep you from coming to Him because God doesn't care about that stuff. When you're coming to Him, He says, hey, that stuff aside, I love you. And that's really what that song's about. And it's a wonderful song. It made a difference in a lot of people's lives. Now, let's do something here. So, so your wife and your kids uh, obviously stay at home as you travel. Mm -hmm. But how, how old are your kids now? How old are my kids? My kids, well, see, I have one child that's like 33. He's 33? Yeah, it's crazy, right? Well, I'm 35, but I wasn't going to say that. Yeah, it, it's crazy. You're like my dad, real age, really. Close, close. You probably need to edit that out. <laughs> so, thir let's see, he's 33, and then I have a, a young lady. She's 27. Her name is Jillian. Dustin is my oldest. Uh, then I have a middle son who is 24. Mm -hmm. His name is Emery. And then I have a, uh, a youngest daughter. Her name is Jules, and she is 17. 17. Yeah, and my wife, you know, she's she looks like my daughter a lot of people when i've gone to churches and taken her with me they'll say so it's nice that you brought your daughter with you yes so whatever someone someone just asked me at the table about my grandkids and there it was actually my daughter michaela they were talking about <laughs> yeah yeah that was fun nice. don't you love when they come up so so question i was going to ask you is so you've watched your, your family grow up now that they're in a different stage of their life they're they're kind of i mean you have a 17 year old but really they're, they're getting out of the house as, as a father, watching them grow up, what are some of the things that you're learning? What are some of the difficult parts about, you know, as, as they mature more into adulthood? You know what, I've learned, you know, we well, we did our very best, dead level best, to raise them the way that we felt like God would have us to raise them. So we have no regrets in regards to that. Um, they've made their own decisions and had to, you know, along the way, had to make some mistakes yeah. in order to learn and we just have to let them do those kind of things that's very painful for you know you've got young kids i got young kids see that's why i'm asking because because yeah. you're always watching them but then when they get to their age i mean now they're having families on the road and, and you and know what it they may it may not be huge mistakes i've had some some of my kids have made small mistakes and they have even called and said hey what should i do about this or that and asked for my wisdom then i have you know children who have made huge mistakes and didn't want to know what I had to say about it. Right. And you just have to let them live their life. And at some point, the Bible is true when it says, if you raise them in the way they ought to go, the Bible says, the Bible doesn't say they'll stay on the path. The Bible says they will return to it. Right. And uh, which means it, it, and they do, and, and all of them have. I saw a blind man Tapping along, losing his way as he passed through the throng. Tears filled my eyes. I said, Friend, you can't see, but with a smile on his face, he replied unto me I'll see all my friends in Hallelujah Square what a wonderful time we'll all have a fair we'll see Dragging his feet, he could not walk like we do. 
down the street I said my friend I feel sorry for you oh but he said up in heaven well I'm gonna walk just like you now I saw Welcome back. We're here with the Greater Visions, Chris Allman, tenor singer, and thank you so much for being a part of this yeah, uh, program. I played some songs and so on. My last question to you is: You've been a pastor, I have and been you've a been a singer. I have. The biggest. I know there's a lot of pastors and a lot of gospel groups that. What is the biggest difference between the two? Well, I would say the people, but boy, you have to deal with people in both of them, don't you? you do. But but I will say this: In being a pastor, I had to deal with the same people. <laughs> yeah. every week. You get to leave the people and go to a different church. Now I just, you know, I see them and I leave. Yes, so that's right. a blessing. See, my dad yeah. passed 25 years and his biggest thing is he, does, he doesn't miss the pastoring part, I'm sure you don't, or the preaching. It was the annual meetings that he had. <laughs> you know what? I forget who it was that said, but this is a true statement. Ministry would be easy if it weren't for people. It's true. And that's just the truth. This yeah. has been the most encouraging TV program we've had. So I'm just going to tell you, no, really, let me just say this to all of you who do go to church and you do have a pastor, obviously, you need to pray for that man uh, because that, I would have to say, is the most challenging position that I've ever had to hold in regards to trying to make, you can't make God happy and make people happy too. So you have to make your decision. And, and in this day and time, that's a harder uh, that's a harder choice. It's 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 very hard to do, yeah. to say hey because you have people out there and they're tithing, <laughs> and you know what I'm saying. And you don't want to lose your tithers, right. and you're thinking if I say this I might offend them. But the bottom line is is God owns a cattle on a thousand hill, and He's a lot more faithful than any tithers ever been. Yeah. So it's our job to uh, to to please God, and to minister to the people what they need to hear, not what they'd like to hear. Hey Chris, you know what? It's been an honor. It's, we're here at the National Quartet Convention and I know just taking time out of your busy schedule, we, we thank you. We, we I appreciate, appreciate you. So. I always have time for you. I know you do because sometimes yeah, I bring you up, we have lobsters, so I understand. Lobster. So. <laughs> hey Chris, thank you. We'll be back with more great music on Southern Style Praise. We have a God like no other, reigning high upon His throne. He is the Lord, He's our Father, in sovereign power He rules alone. Yet He came and dwelt among us, open wide His loving hands. He took the name 
be our Savior, the only one who's ever been. Oh, there's never been a more precious hand, never pierced on a rugged cross. Oh, there's never been a more blessed plan, salvation for the lost. Oh, there's never been another perfect man who would die for one and all. Never one crucified to live again. He's a God who's gone for others and never been. Amen. <laughs> he changes lives like no other, gives a peace forevermore, forgives the sin of the sinner. pierced on a rugged cross. Oh, there's never been a more blessed plan, salvation for the lost. Oh, there's never been another perfect man who would die for one and all. Never one crucified to live again. Hallelujah, he's a God who's gone for others and never been. Oh, there's never been a more precious hand ever pierced on a rugged cross. Oh, there's never Plan salvation for the lost Oh, there's never been another perfect man Who would die for one and all Never one crucified to live again Hallelujah, he's a God who's gone for others And never been Never one crucified to live again Hallelujah, he's a God who's gone for others soldier in a shameful gambling game won the blood-stained garment that once had clothed my king just a cheap robe of linen no great value did it hold <laughs> but when worn by the master yes. it was worth more than gold you see a few days before why this old garment had changed the life of a tired and helpless woman who believed with all her might reached out and touched it with a hope to be restored. She knew this plain old garment was the vesture of the Lord. God uses God.
you see It's what he can make you to be Amen Cause if God can take an old common garment And change a life Then surely he can use you yes, and me you see, we are the reason that Jesus came to die. And we have been chosen to send forth his lies. So it doesn't matter if your worth is great or small. God needs some willing vessels, just common garments, that's all. Cause God uses common garments to do uncommon. Welcome back to Southern Style Praise. I'm your host, Richard Hissong, and I'm here with the Tallies. It is an honor to be with you here at the National Quartet Convention. Thank you so much, Richard. We're just thrilled to be here. And it's an exciting week. It is an exciting week. It's great Absolutely. to be here. And But you have a lot of different exciting weeks. You guys travel. You do producing. You also have Abraham Productions. Tell folks about Abraham Productions and what's going on there. It's, an, uh, it's a group of guys that got together and decided we wanted to promote gospel music and emphasize the gospel. We have uh, Singing in the Sun at Myrtle Beach, the Gatlinburg Gathering uh, near here in Gatlinburg in August. We have cruises and a lot of different uh, events going on during the year, and it's a great, great thing. If you see any of us coming to your area 
and it's an Abraham Productions event. We'd love to have you. Absolutely. So are, now you all are part of the Girls of Guitar Tour too, right? So how do you fit into that? Sorry, I don't want to. I'll ask you a question, That's but okay. I, That's Girls okay. of Guitars, and I see Roger Talley's picture. Roger Talley and Grant Gibson with Karen Peck. We are the two. Uh, token guys yeah. and we uh, are there to just prop up the girls and support them so they need your help they do need our help they get us there they get, they get, you, us, there. get us there <laughs> hey, you have a brand new uh, video love fun video uh, the, the umbrella song that's yes. what I call it yep. but tell us the official and how they can see it on uh, YouTube and Facebook it's called grab your umbrella it's our newest radio single and the video is available on YouTube right. or thetallies.com or you can see it on the Tallies Facebook page. Okay, final question I'll have for you because okay. you're the mother. So I travel with my parents and you travel with your daughter. Yes. Okay, so since you all are blessed traveling with your kids. Oh, absolutely. No, no, I'm just joking. We're well, absolutely, it's true. That's no, so true. But And we're honored to travel with our parents. Sure. But I know, tell us uh, one blessing about being able to travel as a family like you do and you all are, are you know, one of the elite families in gospel music. Oh. But, but tell us one of the blessings that is traveling with your daughter. Well, I think for one thing, she's been with us since we've been traveling in the early 80s with Roger's brother, Kirk, and she grew up on the bus. And so it's just great to watch God take her and use her and grow her. And we get to be witness to it all. And we're best friends. So that's just the best part. That is fantastic. Well, guys, we've taken a lot of your time. Thank you for being a part of Southern Style Praise. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate you and what the tallies have meant uh, to oh, all Southern Gospel music and to our, our, the fans, too. So thank you. Thank you so much. All right. We'll be back with more great music right here on Southern Style Praise. Thank you. 